Wow, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, thank you so much, head girl, uh, big sis. Friends, you're welcome. And thank you so much for giving God your time this morning. Um, I'm so privileged to come speak to us this morning, especially the Thursday morning like this, as we all wake up to speak to the morning. The Bible says, have you commanded your morning? And I just believe the Lord that every one of us, we have woken up to command the morning and every power from the sources of the Nile will not have anything to do with us because the Lord has given us every grace we need to take on. So let's pray together as we carry on. Father, thank you so much for this amazing time that you've given us, Lord, to wake up together. Lord, we surrender all that we are and all that, Lord, we are to be to you. We ask that you will use us for your glory. You will use us for your praise. Use us, O God, Father, for your own purpose. Lord, I just bring myself to you. And I say, God, as I come to bring this word to your people, Lord, your name be praised. Your name be praised. Your name be praised. Your name be praised. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You a miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You a miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. You are destiny changer. You are a destiny changer. Who oh, come and change your destinies? Our destinies tonight. Come on, change our destiny, our destiny is tonight. Change your destiny here, change your life here. Lord, make someone's life that was set, Lord Father, for sadness. Turn things around. Those who have been waiting for you for ages. And Lord, they have interviews, they have, Lord, assignments, and they do not know how things are going to go. I speak to the airwaves in the name of our Lord Jesus that the favor of the Lord is released upon us now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, you're welcome. And I'm so happy to come speak to us. I'm going to use some few minutes that I was given. I want to appreciate the leadership of uh, the cathedral uh, through... Um, the, uh, the provost and assistant provost, uh, Reverend Jafu, who reached out to me uh, to get time, prepare myself to speak to us this morning. My name is Pastor Ali Isaac. I pastor a team with um, the Glorious Days Ministries. By the grace of God right now, we, we are growing by its owner. And I'm um, here in the land of Norway taking on some responsibilities, but we bless the Lord for each and everything that he gives to us all days. So blessed that the, the weather is calm and we can be able to dive in together. I don't know what you are thinking and I don't know what you've gone through, but I've taken time to prepare myself with some few slides about this message today. When every one of us is called to shine so that you can be able to bear fruit. When I looked at how they framed these, I was really looking at and saying, God, what is the what is behind? What revelation is behind this that we need to shine so that we can bear? Why don't we? just go and bear fruit. Why is it that we need to shine? Someone must shine 
so that they can bear fruit. Why? And so at the process when I was getting through this, I realized through scripture so many times, nobody who has ever risen up to bear fruit rose up from nowhere. They had to first shine in a particular area before they can ever bear a fruit. And because of that, I realized this is why the word came to the leadership. So child of God, I can assure you, whether you like it or you don't like, if you sleep, you will sleep and sleep will sleep you. But if you choose to get up, even rising up to pray, that is a one of the areas of shining. Shining does not mean you will come out from a particular ground and begin to do things so very different, you know, and carry whatever God has put in you to do and whatever he has interested you in, you must shine from there. And when you shine in that area, that is where you will begin to bear fruit from. And that's when bearing fruit will come into your life. So I'm just giving us a few times of a scripture that I was given to speak about. And uh, that is in Colossians chapter one. And I just want to go faster in these uh, and find out what exactly, you know, our moderators just read it, but there's something unique about this. And I underlined it, and I'm going to talk about it in depth when we talk about shining to bear fruit. The Bible says that for this reason, we also, since the day we had it, mark that word also, we had it. Today you will hear the word. And I, I knew I've had the word. But these few hours, these few minutes that you have chosen to call it, you will hear the word. Do not cease to pray for you. You know, do not cease to pray for you. And, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Filled with all his will. You know, we need the knowledge of God if you ever want to know the will. We will get deeper into this later. You know, and anybody ever think of spiritual understanding, listen to these words well that you may walk worthy, number one, of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with, with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Now, sometimes we may not like this word, patience and long suffering. We are in a culture where you need to jump. That's why we can say, get a chair, claim everything. You know, when we, I was growing up in salvation, one of the things that we used to, they used to tell us was that whatever you find, find it up, go and touch a car in the street, claim it, this is, I possess, I take, I carry. I realized one day when I was praying, then the Lord told me, do you know where that man got that car from? You are claiming everything. You are claiming this man's problem. I dropped that prayer completely after revelation. But many times we hear, go and claim, claim this, take that, go and touch it. You know, you know, we have a reason. We have a setup in our lives. Everything is well prepared by God for each and every one of us. It might be long suffering. But the key behind these is patience and knowing what to do. You see, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. I love this one. I am actually uh, a, a partaker. I have been, I have been qualified to, to partake in this journey of life. I have been qualified to inherit 
you know, whatever belongs to me, I have been qualified. You have been qualified. I want to encourage somebody here as we kick off right now. Just speak to yourself. You, myself. Understand one word, you have been qualified to be a partaker of all the inheritance that you must. Whatever belongs to you, whether what or what, whether Satan likes it or yes, if you have it in your mind that I am qualified, I have already been qualified to take on this, Every inheritance that belongs to you, you shall not die before you do it. The power of life and death is in the tank. When you wake up in the morning like this and you begin to speak negative, so shall it be to you. You are stamping every kind of failures, every kind of agreements of hell in you instead of stamping your inheritance. As the day wakes up, Jesus told the disciples, if God can provide for the bodies, why not for you? Why not think about you? He will provide for you more because he that was able to provide for the part can be able to provide for you. So be encouraged this morning as you wake up because if you ever want to bear fruit, you must shine in every detail of your life. Begin by causing turning around your thinking capacity and turn around your ways of, you know, you know, of, 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 of carrying on with things. Begin to release your mouth to begin to speak positive about things regarding your life, I can assure you that, that that is yours. You will actually get it. And nothing can ever stand against God's purpose in your life. Why? You were taken. You were prepared, already set up to inherit what belongs to you. What does it mean to shine? I'm going to do shining in a general definition. And then I'm going to do bearing of the fruit biblically. Now, when you look at shining, it says being brilliant. I'm not looking at you putting disigo on your faces and, you know, say, I am shining now, you know. But when you're brilliant, when you're excellent in everything you do, then it means you're shining. Let's not mistake this and begin to think that shining is when I, you know, the other person can do this and I am going to work and all that. But whatever you find yourself doing and you are excelling in it and you're very brilliant in that matter, I can tell you, you are shining. Be encouraged now today. Some of us have been stopped by words of men that you are useless, you can mount to nothing. I want to speak to your life today. Just know one thing, nobody can qualify you and define you rather than yourself. No any person has a right to define you. You have a right to define yourself and you have a right to speak what you are and what you're going to be. What you do, what you are doing, and what you are in. So long as you are brilliant in it, so long as you set yourself for excellency, child of God, I can assure you, you will be able to be a great partaker in that level. Greater things will happen in your life if you are brilliant. And brilliancy does not mean books. Go and read this and all that. God bestowed in us a very natural gift. Every one of us has it. By the time God was molding you in your mother's womb, there is something very awesome about you. Not when we go to school and we say, I was brilliant. I got, you know, first class. I was these kind of things. Yes, you might have first class, but if you don't have the knowledge of God, the, the greater natural brilliance of God, you are useless. He that picks up that that God has put in them and utilizing them well are the great guys who will shine in every aspects of their lives. What is that that 
God has bestowed in you? What is that that God has put up in your life? Can you use it now to cause your journey to change? You know, whatever you find your hands to do, do it with every breath because you are actually going to make it in life. Don't look at things and say, this is for this and for me, I'm not part of this. No, if you find it to do it, do it with all might. The brilliancy in you will make you to be a man and a woman of valor. When I talk about this, I look at a man called David. It was brilliancy that made him to perform excellency in all that he does. Nobody had ever told him that you can use a stone to hit a, a, a giant. No, people use guns. And that is what many of us are going for. Every small thing around you, you just want to use a gun. You know, prayers, prayer, prayer, bombarding with every kind of artilleries. Instead of knowing what to do, a brilliant person who will wake up when, you know, Satan is trying to, and just look at and say, Satan, you say, okay, you go and play. For me, I'm, go, I'm going to sleep. Okay, I thought it was something different. I thought it was God coming to speak to me. So it is you who is making noise in my room. Continue making it. Let me actually go back and sleep. But somebody who is not brilliant wake up and begin to bombard everywhere across scatter all the things. Put yourself in that area God has given you. You will rise up. You will shine and you will see greater things coming. Number two, what is brilliancy? Brilliance or being shining means you giving out. We need to give out today. I am giving out what I have. I know you, are, you must give out what you have. And when you're giving out, you are standing to reflect that inner part of you. The inner part of you must, must, must be bright light. And out of the inner you, greater things come and happen. What are you giving out today? What is the deposit that you're speaking out to your life today? That is what I want to think about. Anybody who wakes up and does right, you begin to see many things happening in your life. And I believe the Lord that you will be blessed and so many things will happen. What is bearing fruit? I pick this from, from, uh, from the word of God. So I anal analyze so much of the scriptures, around 10 of them to come up with this word. Bearing fruit is an outward action that results from the inward condition of a person's heart. Just mark the word. Bearing fruit is an outward action that results from the inward condition of the heart. Therefore, if you do not believe in yourself that you are brilliant, if you don't believe in yourself that you are excellent, if you don't believe in yourself that you can be a, a person who can give out, you only want to take, you only want to take every day, every night. That you tell, they, they tell you, can you lead? Can you lead morning devotion tomorrow? Ah, you know, you know, Reverend, me, I cannot. You will continue remaining dormant and dormant, and the only thing you can only make is noise. You know. One of the animals I like making noise in Uganda is what we call a pig. So you can remain in that circus. But if you ever believe in yourself and you know you're brilliant, you know you can give out, you know you are excellent, then you can bear fruit. Because bearing fruit does not come from nowhere. And I want you to mark that in your lives. It does not come from nowhere. It has to come from the heart. And the condition of the heart matters. Men, women, what is the condition of your heart? Today, if your heart is totally out of order, the doctors will tell you, you have high blood pressure. Many people, many children of God have high blood pressure of God. High blood pressure, because you do not, spiritual high blood pressure, you do not have a heart that can bear anything good. Our hearts are rotten. Our hearts are filthy. Our hearts are full of stones. Even when God is saying, rise up, child, you begin to say, I am, gone. I am tired. Even when God is saying, walk, take, go to this place. You begin to tell God, I have tried and I have failed. 
Even when God said, move and do this, we tell God, it is over. Enough is enough. But then when you go to church, and you, you always think, I will do something good, you are lying. Whether you are who, whether you are who, so long as the heart, the condition of your heart is totally out of order, you will never be able to bear fruit. Praise the Lord. Mark this in our lives. As we grow, as we learn the world around us and experience life in its manifold test or facets, we are expected to produce fruits of highest quality. Highest quality fruits that only resemble our creator. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 27, after creating everything, God spoke and said, now let us create man in our own image, in our own likeness. God bestowed all that he is to man. Actually, by the way, you resemble God. When I see people running up and down, they want to resemble other people. It disturbs my mind, you know. Everywhere I find people, men, women, people are looking for to, to look like other people. They don't want to be them. You know, people paint their faces, people paint their eyes like what? You don't want to be you. I have a staple that even when I am black, I am black like my God. If I am dark, I am dark like my God. If mm. I am short, I am short like my God. God, God if yes. I am what, I am that like my God. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. <laughs> so experience of life must make you produce a fruit. And when you accept the experience of life, you will go and produce a greater fruit that resembles your father. But many of us have failed in this. Many of us have left the purpose of, of, of that that we are meant to bring. I want to speak to our lives today. We need to keep this in our mind, that we are created in the image of God. And whatever is expected of us is a high quality things. That mouth of yours, we expect high quality words. You know, you wake up in the morning, what you're planning is to go and begin to backbite people. May the Lord rebuke that tank of yours. You wake up in the morning, one thing you know is to talk about other people, is to, you know, to break other people. May the Lord break you before you break other people. You wake up in the morning, you say, we're thinking, right, and you know, you're planning to kill people. May the Lord kill you before you kill other people. You know, you wake up in the morning, your thoughts are very weird. May weirdness continue carrying you on if you do not want to repent and put your life right. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. And the greatest expectation God is, is expecting of you is expectation of doing things right like your father did it, like your father created you for. You are just not a seed. Out of 3,005 million seeds, that is produced by a man. You are the you are the one that successfully entered you know the egg and turned to become a human being. Hallelujah! It doesn't matter how short your nose is. Is it doesn't matter how how your tongue is. It doesn't matter how big your eyes can be. It doesn't matter. You are a person who went through victoriously from the time of creation. All other seeds from man, from your father, were flushed away, but you remained in the, in the womb of your mother and you came out victoriously. Some of you are 80, 70, 60, 40. You are there because you are a winner. You are there because you are a high quality seed and therefore because of being a high quality seed. Do not allow these nitty gritties to pull you down instead of, instead rise up so that you can shine and bear fruit. Men at 40, today you find a man at, at 40 is a baby. They begin to move up and down, running like, you know, like jiggers in their legs. You know, looking for young girls everywhere. You know, 
women at 30, men, oh, people are moving and doing things wickedly. Some people think because I'm now aging, I must go and steal and so that I can be rich. I, I want to speak to you. Keep the highest fruit in you, the highest seed you are at the right time. God will turn things for you and you will celebrate his great honor in your lives. Praise the Lord. Let's take root in the soil. As you're rooted in the soil today, I can tell you so many other experiences will come. But I wanted to stand in the love of God. I wanted to stand that you will be able to be a person of greater fruits. Mark in your life today, like I said earlier, you cannot shine to bear fruit if your heart condition is totally down. We have a lot of suffering diseases that we have created. As the Bible says in, in the term in chapter 28, some diseases that we carry like ulcers, like what? We created it because of the heart. You know, when you speak about something, you just wake up from nowhere and begin to hate people. And whenever you, you hear that name, your heart is totally gone. That dream life begins to release. So the systems in your life burn. Doctors will go and tell you every kind of thing, but I can tell you and assure you, the best drug in life to heal all those things is a drug or having a clean heart. So whatever you go through in this world, whatever is set up in your life today, choose one thing. Bear the fruit of Christ. Shine up in the areas where people expect you to be low and bear Christ. I can tell you whatever you desire. Paul speaks in Galatians 5, 22. I will explain it later in another, another way. We have, when we carry on this and we are taking love, we are carrying on peace, we are taking on for, you know, forbearance, kindness, good, uh, goodness, etc. We will turn things upside down and we will never cause a delay in our destinies. But today, it is not possible because many of us are not doing this. It is hard as I'm speaking to you right now. Some of you have already challenged your minds and beginning to wonder, I want to run to work. You're already complaining. This meeting does not, it, it takes long. You know, let me just go and work. Kale, go, run and work. You will keep working and working until your body tears up. But when you give God your hours, when you set yourself to the Lord, that you, you take on godliness or goodness, you carry on and bestow your gentleness, the Lord will mark things for you and you begin to see change, destiny is changing for you. May you all rise up. May we all rise up so we can be able to be men and women that will bear fruit now in season and out of season. What is expected of us as I begin to wind up? One. In Romans chapter 8, verse 19, the Bible says, all creations are waiting in, in expectation for your manifestation. I just sum it up, but go and read it yourself. Whether you like it, or Ugandan land is waiting for you. The trees in Uganda that are dying, they're waiting for you. Everything you see around there, they're waiting for your manifestation. As you're also looking and saying, God, I pray for the tree. I pray for, when you choose to manifest, even the tree in your family will manifest. When you choose to manifest, even the water, which is killing people in Uganda, will also manifest. When the church of Christ chooses to manifest and do things right, all other things will manifest. A man sang a song, all other grounds. Is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. They are sinking because you are set. You have manifested that. That is rising up and raising dust in your family. When you manifest, a standard will be raised. So God expect of us two things of or four things, five things I'm going to discuss with us here. That's why we wind up. One, whether you like it or you don't like it, 
choose to walk right. Nobody can shine and bear fruits when you're not walking right. The Bible says, a man who walked right with God disappeared and was not seen again. And that was a man called Enoch. Today we don't find that because we are mainly pretenders. When we are in the church, when you are with us, with the pastors, with reverence, we are so holy, but totally down. We don't walk right. Can you choose to walk right? But indeed, by the way, when people see you, they see things right. Number two, will you choose to do things that uh, please God? Will you make up in your life and say, this is what I will do? You know, in Proverbs you know, 16, 17, Solomon speaks about what a man who pleases God, what happens to them. Will you choose to do things that please God and not pleasing man? You walk around everywhere. People want to please you because you've come. You know, today you see people because you were more somewhere, they do things because you're there. Can you do things that please God that even your people around you will see and say, this person is doing things right? Can you stand up and be people who will be fruitful everywhere, bearing fruit of God everywhere? Who are the corrupt people in Uganda? Isaac, Moses, Francis, Agnes. Those are the corrupt people in Uganda. Very corrupt. But who are they? Isaacs. When they come to church, they are angels. Actually, they look like, actually like archangels. But they are thieves. Now they have used the word, the word of the world. Misappropriation of funds. The Lord will also cause you to be misappropriated. If you, that is what you want. But we must bear fruit everywhere. If you know that that does not belong to you, don't pick it. If you know that that is what is you must do it. But that is not what we're doing. But expectation from us so that we can shine is so we must be people who bear fruit everywhere we go. We must be people of good character. Be good in everything. Who are the murderers who are murdering people? Isaacs. Who are they? They are poisoning each other. They are abusing each other, murdering with the words. Isaacs. Can you choose to be different today? And then lastly, increase in the knowledge of God. There is nothing else my people perish from. The Bible says we perish not because we lack food, not because we lack what? We perish because we lack knowledge. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is power. Everybody who needs, who has knowledge, will be able to shine. Do you know that in Joshua chapter 1, God told Joshua, verses 8, 9, if you ever want riches, it is not from Pastor Isaac. No. Riches is when you put yourself in the word and make sure that this book does not depart from your heart. It's not in hard work, but it is in the knowledge that you receive from the word and God will make you move somewhere here and things begin to turn out for you. Those who went earlier, you begin to see things happening. So what do you need to do as you set into prayer? Look, God gives us one word that pulls us out. And that is Isaiah chapter 60. Nobody can ever have the glory of God in their lives unless they rise up. Nobody can ever shine unless you rise up. Nobody can ever bear fruit unless you rise up. You need to rise up because it's written, arise. Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God will now be seen on you, or is risen upon you. If you keep dying in your own movie, I can tell you, you will just be dreaming shining. Have you ever dreamt driving a car, only to wake up and you see a bicycle in your house? And nothing, you keep, and then you go back again. 
God could be driving you to do something that will cause a change in your life, but you will refuse. Today, as I speak, the Lord, the Spirit of God is encouraging me that someone here, it is time for you to rise up and, and so that you can do that that the Lord has been encouraging you to do. You have spoken about it several times, but you have failed to implement the thing. Rise up, child of God. Rise up and do it. Even the darkness, even what will scatter, nations shall grow to your rising. When you choose to do something, that's when nations will come. When you choose not to do it, you will suffer and remain suffering and nothing good will ever come. Life will always give you so many reasons to give up. But I want to encourage you, as Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 to 8 says, if you choose to stand, you are blessed. For they that trust in the Lord are blessed. The Lord will be all your confidence. And I can tell you, in times of drought, in times of every kind of difficulties, when you choose to rise up, when you choose to stand up amidst your contemporaries, hallelujah, when you choose to be different from your contemporaries, when you choose to do things in a different way from other people, when you choose to make your light in, when you choose to switch on and don't switch off, the Bible says, in the year of drought, in the season of drought, you will never fail and you will always bear fruit. Rise up, child of God, and go and bear fruit. Rise up, child of God, and take what belongs to you now and make everything come to possibility. I can assure you, the Lord God has affirmed this. When I read the book of Jeremiah, I am always encouraged. The Lord has affirmed this. Whether what or what, you know, whether it comes like what, when you make a choice, even in drought, things will happen. Isaac chose to rise up in times of drought when people are saying it is impossible. Change your language. The economy might be very difficult, but those who choose to speak positive, God will make things work their ways. Don't dance the tunes of lamenters. Stop lamenting like somebody who has no father. Stop it. Wake up and begin to do things right. For he that liveth in you is greater than he that liveth in that world. Wake him up. The Bible says, as they struggle on their own, when the storm broke in the lake, you know, the, the, the water was full in, in the boat. Jesus was lying in the boat, but Jesus could, did not want to stand up. Even when the water was, you know, was soaking him, he was feeling cold. He waited for one man to go and wake him up. You have struggled in life. You've been struggling on your own. Jesus is in the boat. Because when we get saved, Jesus comes in our lives. He's actually sleeping. He's actually resting in that boat there. He's seen the storm you're going through. He's seen every struggle you're going through. But you have chosen to do things on your own. Can I tell you today? Rise. Rise, arise, you will see yourself shining. Go and tell him, don't you care about me? Speak to yourself and say, rise, in me here. Don't you care? A human body is actually in the description of a boat. A moving object that keeps on moving with so many things in it. That is you. You are the boat. He is sleeping there. He is awake there. He just needs you to wake him up. He just said, don't you care? When he just spoke that word, don't you care? The Bible says he just rose up, stretched his hands and commanded the storm to be still. And the storm was still. Child of God, I decree your life tonight. When you choose to wake up and wake Christ up, the storm will be commanded. And when the storm is commanded, we will shine. And will bear many fruits. And as we take on today, as Christians of today, one of the things God has put in us, 
is that the biggest art in us is the, the, the art of transformation. Transformation. Obedience to God's call. Setting ourselves right for him. And that will lead us to the purpose of glory. And therefore, if you want to do it, go and love. Go and practice peace. Go and reconcile with people who hate you, people whom you have hated. Go, practice greatness. Go, practice patience. Go, do you good things. Go, train yourself for self-control. Some of us don't have to control ourselves. You know, we are like, you know, robots. You just wake up in your life and you, you just, anything around you begins to make things difficult for you. Can you do some control? Even when they abuse you today, smile and move on. You will bear a fruit. Anyone who tries to come against you, the Bible says they are not sent by God. As they try to come against you, they are coming against themselves. If you choose not to respond to them in the way the devil in them wanted you to respond. I love smiling to people. People have spoken a lot of things about my life, about your life in me. But I just smile at people. I just look at them and smile. You know, I have no time. I have no business of responding to, you know, any negativity of men. I tell God, respond to them. One of the scriptures that I leave you with is in, 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 in Nehemiah. When this, the story builds me up, I read, I read Nehemiah chapter 3 up to chapter you know, 9. Oh, builds me up. But the strategy that I found there is one. One day when the fellas continue to crush the heart of Nehemiah, that the wall you're building, even a goat can step on it and it can crash. Nehemiah woke up one day and told God, I and my men are going to continue working. God, I have no time to listen to this, this guy speaking. Go and listen to them. As me, I continue going. I tell you, he practiced self-control and he continued building the wall. God went and listened to all the, the talks of these men and humbled them later and they had to surrender. I want to speak to your situation right now as we take time to pray. That whatever is that have bounded you, you're choosing to go. When you look at this, what do you see? Is, it, is this an apple? Is this an orange? Is this you know, a tomato? What do you see? All of us are seeing it differently. But the only one that is there, go and bear fruit today. Go, set up yourself. Stop every kind of things that others have been doing. Stop doing things like others have been doing. For you are born, you are set to shine. And when you set to shine, your fruits will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And as we take on time. I just want to do us with the two prayer points, two prayer points of, of, of reference. I want us to use the scripture in, in Isaiah. I know you've gone through so many things in your life. I know you've gone through a lot of difficulties. But now is a time that I want you to pray. And I want to speak positively about yourself. I know so many questions have passed and come your way. But God has given me this platform today. Not that the, the leaders of the church chose and thought of me to come and speak to you. But the Lord directed knowing that I will be used by him to bring a word to your life. You've gone through it. You've seen pain. You've seen difficulties. But there is something God is speaking to you right now. Men, women. I want to pick one word and speak to your life. I choose to rise up. So our prayer direction today is, we are going to pray, God, cause me to rise up. Cause me to rise up and drop this garment. This garment of begging. Bartimaeus, 
if you wanted to, to see again, remember he said, I want to see again. <laughs> Meaning he was seeing, but something wrong happened to Bartimaeus. But Jesus told him, rise up. Bartimaeus rose up. And when he rose up, a second point we're going to use in prayer is, you will drop down everything that has been working in your mind. You drop it down and choose the way of the Lord. You choose to honor God and make God be your light. So let's pray together and pray that today, God, I will rise up. I mean, it's everything I am rising up. I mean, it's all declarations that I've spoken in my life. I am rising up. I'm rising up and I will see your goodness. Father, I just want to thank you for everybody on this call. Thank you for lives of people in this call. That some of us, oh God, have been pushed to the walls and we thought it was over. I am speaking today. Just give us the courage. Just give us, give us that deeper mind that we rise up right now. God, we choose to rise up and we take on to shine because your light is in us. Your glory and your purpose rises up in us, oh God. My father, my father, I want to decree and declare right now to a life here, whatever has been bound in you, rise up, child of God. Rise up in the name of Lord Jesus. Arise. And when you arise, the power of the Lord is risen on you. The power of the Lord is risen on you. And his glory comes. And his majesty comes in the name of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Men, women, let's pray. Pray that today, whatever you've been having in your mind, that has made men think or make you to think that you are nobody. It is like how, you know, Batmires had that cloth, he begging clothes of identity, you know. He dropped it. For him to run to Jesus, he dropped it. I want you to pray tonight that you are dropping down every kind of of clothings, clothings of identity wickedness that the enemy had purpose and put on you and you've been thinking that you are nobody. Drop it right now and begin to speak positive about your life. Say, I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a light breaker. I am a victorious man or woman. I am a light of the world. For he that lives in me has given me all that it takes for me to take on the mantle. And I carry on. Lift your voice and pray now. Tell the Lord, now in this day today, on the 20th of the month of October, I drop down all these garments. I drop this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 onwards, Jesus also invite us to come to him. Take every yoke out of us, you know. Let every yoke that has been bound in you, drop it for the sake of Christ. Pray, pray, child of God, pray, and let the Lord rise up on you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for our lives. Thank you for everyone on this call. Thank you that you have purpose that I can do something now. I drop this garment. Garments that God has caused me to be a nobody. Garments that have made me to think I am a nobody. Garments that have made me to, Lord, weakness so that I can do, I can mount to nothing. I am nothing, God. I want to decree right now. God, I remove them. As Bartimaeus did, so I am. I take on to run. I take on to Lord Father. God, Father, to run to you for my salvation. Run to you, God, today. That I will shine. Because I am a wonderful fruit. And as I shine, God, I bear the fruits and the fruit that is needed. I am a point of encouragement to others. And the power of the Lord is risen on me. And his glory rises up in my life. Thank you, Lord. Lastly, I want you to pray that you will be the light. Choose to be the light. When you go to work, choose to be the light. When you're at home, choose to be the light. Because I can tell you, darkness will try your way. Deeper darkness will try your way. But when your light, your light will supersede the lights of the dark world.
So speak to the heavens right now that as you step out to that office, there, there's some darkness that is waiting for you there. There's some darkness that's chosen to say, I'm going to waste them here. Speak to your life that I am light. I am light. And where I move, I radiate. And my radiation will scatter every other darkness. And therefore, the, my, the light in me shall draw the dark and the dark people into me because I am the one to transform them. Pray, and then I'll conclude and hand over to, to Alem. My father, my father, I know we, are, we face a lot of difficulties in life. Even when we're waking up like this, we are taking ourselves, Lord Father, to offices, some of us at our home. We don't even know what to do. Darkness seems to be in us. When the light comes, we wish it remains dark. But Lord, I'm speaking today that Lord, make us to choose to make a choice by making declaration that we are light. We are light and we switch on. We switch on. We switch on. Nobody can ever be able to say they can and shine when they have not switched on. We switch on today. We switch on. As we switch on, every darkness within and around us, we decree and declare that they have no portion in our lives. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I honor you. In the name above all other names. Thank you, Father, for this morning. I bless you, God, your name, and I bless your children. Thank you for you, Lord, allowing me to speak to them. As I conclude, God, I just want to decree right now. It is a time, Lord Father, for all of us to get up from where we have been. And God, manifest in power. Lord, may you release that divine anointing in us now that will make us stand amidst the contemporaries of this world and know that we are just not nobodies. We who are victorious out of the fruits that our fathers, the seeds of our fathers, of our fathers, we live to be victorious all days of our lives. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I speak redemption in our lives right now. Negative decrease in our lives, I command them by the power in the name of Jesus to bow down. Whatever curses and spells that were decreed in our lives, I command them right now to bow down as you rise up. I decree that in your lips, that those mouths of ours shall come words of victory, shall come words of creation, shall come words of beauty, shall come words of honor, shall come words of glory. Never again, Lord, will out of these mouths come words that destroy. Let the power of the Lord move through our hearts right now. Cleanse his hearts, rejuvenate his hearts to his purpose mm. now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. So, straight Amen. away, uh, only one reminder to you go and bear fruit. Uh, now, Amen. I would like to call Provost. I think he's on call to bless us. I don't want to add anything into this. You know, head girl, I am just telling you go and bear fruit and deal with your heart. Provost, are you on call? Yes, I am, Alan. Over to you. The, yeah, the, the thank you. Guy. Thank you, Alan. And thank you, our brother. That was. Uh, a real challenge to us and we want to pray that the Lord in his mercy will give us the grace uh, to live in light and shine and bear fruit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have spoken into our lives. We ask your favor and blessings upon your son who has emptied his heart for us. 
And Lord, the real words that you put on his lips, oh Lord, and the words that he declared to us as your children. Lord, we pray that you will bear fruit. Will you manifest in us, oh Lord? Will you dispel all the darkness that, Lord, today we choose to shine wherever we are, either in our markets, where we, we do our businesses, in our homes as elders, in our offices, God, as officers, we choose to shine and bear fruit. And the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you. Our dear brother, may this blessing be upon each one of us logged in here. May this blessing keep us and keep our families together now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And God bless Amen. you. Amen. 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 Amen.